Right back to it at beautiful Love's Field in Norman. Welcome back in. It is game number two between the top-ranked Oklahoma Sooners and Tarleton State, Texas. All of your stuff. Ready to roll. Kelsey Hill is in. Was 0 for 2 in the first game of the day. First pitch is a shot back up the middle into center field. That almost got a piece of May's shoulder, it appeared. you want to see out of Kelsey Hill senior leading us off just see a pitch you can hit send it right back where it came from you see Nicole May not expecting that so the Texans already with one more hit than they had in the entire first game Kelsey Hill with the leadoff single and it is Kayla Wallace at two strikeouts in the first game Batting 355 on the season. And just throws that one right past her. I think Jennings over at shortstop kind of pinched a little bit closer to second base. Brito in just a little bit, giving up that 5 6 hole. One and two now. Nicole May, first team All Big 12 last season. Seven career no hitters. And this year, opponents are batting just 170 against her. That is the third best opponent batting average against in the Big 12. that one back. Hannah Core doing the catching once again in this game. She caught the first one. Kenzie Hansen a little bit under the weather. I should say Ludlum back there behind the play. Hannah Core is out in right field for this one. Full we'll count now to Wallace. I love the way that the Texans have come out the last last game as well. This game, they're coming in and they're swinging. They're aggressive. They all pitch fouled right back. Charlton State back to back 30 win seasons. Fourth year as a Division I program. Coach Mark Kupian has been able to Move them from Division Two to Division One. Execute that transition. It's going to be a tr tough transition coming in and playing a team like Oklahoma four years after being D two. Driven down the right field line, and that is a fair ball into the corner. Hannah Core is up with it. Kelsey Hill motors to third, and it's a double for Wallace. And the Texans break out of the gate quickly in game number two. A really good job by Kayla Wallace, really working the count to get something that she can really work with. She battled through that count, 3-2 count. So Tarleton State, a double by Wallace, preceded by the single by Kelsey Hill. They are in business to get on the board first in the nightcap of this doubleheader. These are the situations that Nicole May has to battle through. Coach Rocha, Coach Gasso, I'm sure want to see how she handles this. Runners in scoring position, nobody out. Leading home run hitter on this team. To the plate. Look out down third base where Katie Schaefer fouls this one off. Schaefer, third all time in home runs in Tarleton State history. There is the eighth year head coach 
Mark Kupia became the head coach in 2017. They will open Western Athletic Conference play at Utah Valley on Friday. Nothing in two on Schaefer now. The message here in between games was to just be aggressive. When you're facing a pitching staff that OU has, you're going to see a lot of strikes. They know what they're doing. They know how to work the strike zone. So as a hitter, you just want to get a pitch that you can work with. This one popped up, headed toward the seats. Bounds off the first base dugout. swing and miss for the first out. That is the thing that May has. When she's in trouble, she can ring you up. <laughs> See that ball just working down in the zone with two strikes. It's tough to lay off that. You want to try to keep yourself alive, but the ball kind of fell out of the zone. Now Brady Rowland, the senior catcher, Runner still at second and third. Roland 0 for 2 with a strikeout against Kelly Maxwell in the earlier game. And 0 and 2 here. You know, we saw May get hit for a couple of runs in the first inning against Iowa State the other day, but then really settled down. Yeah, yeah I think. It's a matter of just getting comfortable. I think we've seen Kelly go through it. She looked really comfortable today. May settling in. Back to back strikeouts. As May catches Roland looking for out number two. Really good pitch there. Painting that outside corner. Low and away. And here is the first baseman, Austin Germain. It has been a steady stream of strikes. Wow, we have not seen a Tarleton hitter not have a really aggressive swing. They have all had some solid swings trying to find contact. Austin Germain Jr. from San Antonio rolls this one to third. So after giving up a single and a double, Nicole May retires the side and gives up no runs. And the Sooners come into the plate for the first time in game two. When we return recently, including go two for two in the earlier game, she's in the leadoff spot. Her fellow freshman, Cassidy Pickering. She got freshmen batting one and two. And the Red Hot Sydney Sanders with five home runs in the last week in the number five spot. Look, it doesn't matter how you adjust this lineup. It is potent. Yeah, it is dangerous. No matter where they're at, I think having Ella Parker is giving her an opportunity to kind of show what she's capable of in setting the tone. She pulls the first pitch to first. Dickerson able to complete the play for the first out. In the circle is junior Hannah Blinko leads this Tarleton State team with four wins. And she's out of Georgetown, Texas, Georgetown High School. Did spend two years at Houston, though. So had she stayed there, she would have been a Big 12 opponent of the Sooners these days. Two years at Houston, though, for the junior. And here's Cassidy Pickering. Pickering. Batting 441. That one a tad bit inside. 17 runs batted in for the humble Texas freshman. Pickering was over one with the run score, but walked twice in the first game of the day.
There's strike two, and the count is full. It's a difficult sun field right now. You know, as, as Pickering is looking, if she looked straight down the third baseline, she'd be about blinded by the sun <laughs> at this point. Lead two, pulled to the first baseman, Jermaine. Two down. It's a good start for Blinko. Getting these two leadoff batters out. Ella Parker, it's a big out. Cassie Pickering. Just allowing your defense to make some plays. The name of the game here is just keep the ball in the yard. If your defense has an opportunity to make a play, you're going to be in good shape. Here is Alyssa Brito. Had a base hit, the run scored in the earlier game today. Brito batting 441 with seven home runs. Sooners, two home runs, three doubles in the earlier game. They've hit 12 home runs now in their last four games. And 46 as a team this year. Five of them from Sidney Sanders. <laughs> Brito goes to first with a two-out walk. And the inning will be extended for Tiare Jennings. Now batting the shortstop, number 23, Tiare Jennings. Tiare Jennings doubled in the earlier game, moving her into a tie for second place in Sooner history in doubles. 56 now for her career. Checks her swing on that one. And 2-0 and the count. That one off the glove of Roland. Rito moves up a base. RBI opportunity for Tiare Jennings. Situations that she normally takes advantage of. She's driven in 25 runs this year. And she takes ball four. So after retiring the first two batters in Parker and Pickering, Blinko has now walked Brito and Jennings back to back. Stephanie Phillips, the pitching coach. Tarleton State. She's been on staff 10 years. Staff continuity so critical. And Oklahoma's staff as good as there is in the country. With associate head coach and pitching coach Jen Rocha and associate head coach JT Gasso. Can't help but think that this partnership of Mark Kupian and Stephanie Phillips, 10 years together, both were assistants, and then Coach Kupian ascended to the head coaching spot. But you know what the other one is thinking typically. <laughs> yeah, when you've got that much time together, you tend to mesh really well. You're on the same page often. Here is Sydney Sanders, five home runs in her last four games. A three run home run and four runs batted in earlier today. Big 12 Player of the Week, National Player of the Week by some outlets.
Well, this was earlier today with two aboard. Pickering and Brito had reached in the bottom of the fifth. When that one got way out of here. <laughs> it's not a pitch that she can't get out of the yard. You were saying? <laughs> oh this God. one is gone. Four rows deep. Second home run in as many games, and that's six in the last four games. What a roll Sydney Sanders is on. That's her 10th of the year, and the Sooners have a 3 0 lead. I mean, she is capable of doing so much damage. She can hit an outside pitch out, she can hit an inside pitch out. That ball was belt high. She went up and got that, sent it right out. And that home run is presented by OERB, the people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. I mean, that cleared a few rows in the outfield. That's well over 230. Those are the things that Hannah Blinko has got to be able to clean up. You cannot afford the free passes. That's a one run home run, but turned into three with the walks. You know, if you look back to the opening weekend here, that is eight home runs in eight games for Cindy Sanders here at Love's Field. Since Love's Field has opened, she's hit eight home runs. <laughs> It's not like she's just hitting it into one spot and the wind's blowing it out of here. Yeah. Her spray chart's all over the place. It's unbelievable. I mean, she can go down and get some low balls. She's getting some in the outside corner, inside. She's not afraid to turn on it. Ooh. Mm. That is gonna smart. Jada Coleman hit by the pitch and down to first base with two outs in the inning. <laughs> I hope the Taylor Swift shake it off makes it feel better, but I promise it's still hurting. Her Evo shield, but still that tingle. Mm. It's right at the top, and I'm not sure how those things are. I know there's I don't... protective plastic in there at some point, but a lot of that is cloth. Yeah. And we'll have a pitching change on the part of Tarleton State. Insane, but I mean, she can go yard on an opposite pitch too. Alina Torres batting with Jada Coleman at first. And all of this with two down in the inning. Parker and Pickering got retired relatively easily on ground balls on the infield. A little deeper dive into what Sidney Sanders has been doing here lately. Eight at bats and six home runs in five games. This is back to the beginning of the Iowa State series. But you can go back even further than that to the end of opening weekend here. And then you go back to a week ago tomorrow in that solo game against Texas A&M Commerce. Yeah. She has definitely shown up to Love's Field. And that will be a walk to Torres that extends the inning. That is four free base runners that the Sooners have been given. And now a big opportunity for Riley Ludlam.
Riley Ludlam batting 364. Kenzie Dunbar's number. She's a senior from Crawford, Texas. Limited action her first three seasons, and those are the numbers this year. Ludlam was 0 for 2 with a walk in the first game. That one gets away from Roland by the time she locates it. Coleman has moved to third and Torres has moved down to second. That'll be a wild pitch. Man, tough spot for Kenzie Dunbar. You enter in the first inning at the defending national champions. Ludlam pulls this one under the glove of the shortstop trawl. In to score Coleman. Torres comes home as well. It's a two-run single for Riley Ludlam, and Oklahoma has a 5-0 first-inning lead. Great job by Ludlam, finding a hole to advance her runners. Well, the Sooners have picked up where they left off. They had a five-run fifth inning to close out the run rule in the earlier game, and they now have a five-run first inning here in game two. Hannah Core, the ninth batter of the inning, is in. All of these runs with two outs. And it's only two hits. Roland throws in behind Ludlam. Two hits. Three run home run by Sanders and the two run single by Ludlam. Really good job by Roland behind the plate, keeping that ball in front. In the air to right off the bat of core. Back to the fence is LaRue, and this one is gone. Hannah Core straight away right field. Second home run of the game and the fourth of the day for Oklahoma. It's seven nothing. That is Hannah Kors first home run. <laughs> you love to see that out of a player like Hannah Kor. Just getting your opportunity and taking advantage of it. We've seen Coach Gasso mix her in and out of the lineup all season. But for her to get her first home run, it's huge. So it's a three-run home run by Sanders, a two-run home run by Core, and a two-run single by Ludlam. And the lineup has been rolled over. Ella Parker grounded out to Dickerson to start this inning. Three passes will kill you against this Oklahoma team. Three walks and a hit batsman have all scored. Mm. Ella Parker, two doubles. In the first game of the day. And she draws a walk. That is the second walk issued by Dunbar since she came into the game. Cassidy Pickering gets another chance. She grounded out to the first baseman Jermaine earlier this inning.
Dunbar really trying to work the corners. Sliced foul. One and two to count here on Pickering. I mean, the numbers are just astounding. I keep looking at them and they have 14 home runs for Oklahoma since last Saturday when they played that doubleheader against Iowa State. I think any nerves on opening weekend at Love's Field have quickly gone away. Oh, I would agree. And this team has really settled into its new beautiful home. Talk about trying to keep the ball in the yard, but really that's difficult to do with this lineup. We say, you know, keep the ball down, paint the corners, but they're able to really hit everything that's thrown within the zone. I mean, we've seen balls go out of the yard that are lower than the kneecaps, up at the eyes. Their contact points are great for inside and outside pitches. Pickering gets that bat through the zone quickly, doesn't she? She continues to fight off pitches from Mackenzie Dunbar. That one in the air to center field, pretty shallow and run down by Hill. Inning over, damage done. Two more Sooner home runs and another for Sidney Sanders. Eight home runs in eight games for Sanders. Six home runs in her last five. And helping elevate the Sooners to a 7-0 start in game two of this twin bill. One count. This Oklahoma pitching staff just so deep. We saw the complete game no hitter earlier from Kelly Maxwell. Now Nicole May, both of whom were all Big 12 pitchers a season ago. Maxwell and May bouncing ball back up the middle, and Tristan Troll has a leadoff single here in the second for the Texans. You talk about this staff, and that's not even seeing Kirsten Deal, S.J. Guerin, or Keeney, or Monticelli so far today. Yeah, it's a really talented staff. And with what Coach Rocha knows and her experience and just the coach that she is, this is a deadly pitching staff. Monticelli only being a sophomore. S.J. Guerin, technically in her freshman year. Kirsten Deal, sophomore. I mean, they have a lot of time to develop and grow still, and they're pretty good already. Rolled over to Brito. She'll go to second, get the out there. And the relay not in time to get Hill. So Tristan Troll cut down at second base for the first out. Great decision by Brito, closing in that 5-6 hole gap, taking a look at if she has time to get that play at second base. See her kind of hiccup to make that decision, but she got the out. Here's Jordan Dickerson, the second baseman. In the air to center field, Coleman backtracks, two down. <laughs> Having fun dancing out in center field, Jada Coleman. <laughs> 
Ashley LaRue, the number nine batter. It's a really good pitch, that late break up in the zone. LaRue was 0 for 1 with a strikeout in the first game of the day. 1 and 2 the count on her now. Tarleton State picked fifth out of 10 teams in the Western Athletic Conference this year. And they will open conference play at Utah Valley on Friday. Sooners will head to Lubbock to take on Texas Tech. To first base, a little bobble there momentarily by Sanders. She'll win the foot race to the bag and get LaRue. And the inning is over. 7-0 Sooners headed to the bottom of the second inning. New pitcher is Kendall Daniel for Tarleton State. She'll face Alyssa Brito to start the sooner half of the second inning. Brito, then Tiara Jennings, and Sydney Sanders to face the redshirt freshman 5'10 out of Kingwood, Texas. She has an amazing story. That's Kendall Daniel. She's pitched well of late. Just one earned run in her last three starts. Didn't make an appearance a season ago. This pitch is up and in. Kendall Daniel was involved in a near fatal car accident her senior year of high school. That was 22 months ago. And just under one month ago, she threw a no hitter <laughs> against Mississippi Valley. Amazing. That is amazing. What a bounce back. Through that one past Brito for the first out. And that is the first strikeout for the Texans in this game. Daniel is the third pitcher. It's a really good pitch. Starting up at the letters, rising just slightly under the barrel. Brings in Tiari Jennings, who walked and scored on the Sidney Sanders home run back in the first. Let's jump into Destiny's Keys. They are presented by Riverwind Casino. It's always a good time. And number one, you turned these in before the start of the game. <laughs> I did. We, we've got to see Tarleton's limit their passes, the free passes we saw that first inning. It generated a lot of runs for the Sooners. With their timely hits, any free passes, it hurts them. And for OU, I'd just like to see them stay sharp on defense, on offense, swing at good pitches, make every play that you're given. That one bounces up to Tiara Jennings, three and one to count on the Sooner shortstop. Seven homers and seven doubles for Tiare this year. Line shot right at Dickerson, second baseman for the second out. Great. 
at by Tiare. Seeing that ball late in the zone. Again, they're really good with understanding their contact points. Where each pitch is thrown, they understand how to hit it, where it should be going. Sydney Sanders, two home runs today. She's driven in six runs in this doubleheader. Her three run home run earlier drove in Jennings and Brito. This one skied on the infield. Right near the circle, it'll be Schaefer, the third baseman, and the Sooners go one, two, three in the second. Seven nothing, Oklahoma in game two. Tarleton State set sent in the top of the lineup here in the top of the third. I think we got one more. Maya Bland is in right field. You are correct. So opportunity for some of these young Sooners. Not just at bats, but they'll get some time out in the field discovering the nuances of this beautiful new ballpark. It's nice for the freshmen. They don't really know any better. They've spent a little bit of time at Marita Hines, but more of an adjustment for the senior class. That's a lot of changes. Our, our PA announcer, Andrew Shepard, it, it took him all between innings to get those laid out for everybody. Pickering is out in left to catch that one off the bat of Hill. Hill had a base hit up the middle her first time in this game. Now one for two. That'll bring in Kayla Wallace. She had a double. Her first time up in this game. First two batters reached safely against May, and then she went strikeout, strikeout, ground ball. One and one to count. Inning that we saw May close out the leadoff batter. First inning, she gave up a hit, then a double. Second inning, she gave up another hit. Let's see if she can close out this inning. through that one two down and strikeout number three on the day for Nicole May. It's a really good pitch. That rise ball spin painting that outside corner. Brings in Schaefer who was a strikeout victim her first time against Nicole May. This mix of pitches has really started to show itself the last couple of innings. It seemed like maybe the, the Texans ambushed a couple in that first inning. Yeah, I think they came out ready to attack. But May with back-to-back -back strikeouts to close the third. Four strikeouts for the game. Seven-nothing Oklahoma headed to the bottom of the third. And you're watching Sooner Soft do Oklahoma is headed out to Lubbock for Big 12 Conference action coming up this weekend. So all kinds of substitutions, meaning pinch hitters. Maya Bland bats for the first time in this game. She's batting for Jada Coleman, who was hit by a pitch earlier. Lots of changes means lots of opportunities. Oh. 
Mm, on top of the shin guard. <laughs> Catchers take a beating. They do. Roland appears none the worse for wear. We saw Maya Bland get her first Sooner hit on Sunday. It was a double against Iowa State. Slashes this one foul, but caught by Schaefer, the third baseman, for the first out. And that will bring in Alina Torres, who walked and scored on, had a core home run. Alina batting 364. Just another weapon that Patty Gasso and JT Gasso have. And, and with this Oklahoma lineup, it seems like sometimes you work so hard on the hot hitters. And that's been Jennings, it's been Coleman, it's been Sanders. And then sometimes you feel like you can take a breath <laughs> and you get beat. You just can't. There's the, once again, new father, JT Gasso. And his wife, Andrea, welcoming the newest member of the Gasso family as Torres hits this one out into left field. There's JT, and congratulations to them. Gabrielle Ruth Gasso, that's five grandbabies now for Hall of Fame head coach Patty Gasso. She said she doesn't think she has heard Gabby make a peep yet. <laughs> she's She's got five real grandbabies, but the amount of kids that the alumni have popped out recently, <laughs> we're begging her to stay another 18 years. <laughs> Here is Ludlum. Had a base hit and scored on the Hannah Core home run. Back in the first inning, Sooners batted 11 in the first inning, scored seven runs on only three hits. Ludlam rifles this one out into right field. Torres churns for third. LaRue's throw is not in time. Back to back hits by Torres and Ludlam. And here come the Sooners one more time. I love to see it. Just getting your opportunity in Ludlum, starting the first two games of the day and getting her chance to really be a spark in this lineup, and she's done really well. Again, Kenzie Hansen just a little under the weather, not playing this doubleheader. And so Ludlum, the Furman transfer, hitting the opportunity in the double dip. Here's Core who homered. Back in the first. Well, this was with Riley Ludlam aboard. Hannah Core, her first home run. Over the wall and right. <laughs> you love to see it. One of the two home runs in the inning. Sidney Sanders also crushed a three-run home run. Left center field, Hill has room. Tagging at third will be Torres, and she'll chase down run at number eight. And it's eight nothing Oklahoma in the third. Just getting the job done, Core. That's what you want to see out of a player like Hannah Core. Just want to see her get in there, do her job. She doesn't need to be the hero, doesn't need to be the home run hitter. Just get your RBIs, keep the inning alive. Back to the top of the order and Ella Parker. Ella Parker has walked and grounded out in this one, had two doubles in the first game of the doubleheader.
Three runs driven in for Hannah Core in this one. Parker takes a strike. The niece of Los Angeles Dodgers manager Dave Roberts. Zella Parker. That one rolled foul, got a piece of her foot. Downstairs. Ella Parker up in the leadoff spot. Patty Gasso's asked about the of coming into the game. It would have been 23 different lineups in 23 games. It's now up to 25 different lineups. As she said, you can really do a lot of things with analytics. You can look at things, you can try things. And she said, once you get a little more locked in on conference play, you might go with a more set lineup. But those analytics can tell you a lot of things, matchup specific things. And you were saying the other day, you feel like a lot of it is rewarding those who are hitting well. Yeah. Yeah, you've got to, you know, send a message. Nobody can be content. Everybody's got to continue to perform. They're all battling against one another. But I think with technology now, I mean, you're even able to see, okay, who, what are the chances of this pitcher throwing to us? And what is she best at? What, what pitches do we hit the best? Are we better with outside pitches, inside pitches? What can we expect from this pitcher? Who should we put in the lineup? We talked to Coach Gasso just about second base. We've seen a lot of mixes there with Hodge and Alina Torres and she stressed that it's really based on the opponent. They've both performed really well. She trusts both of them in that position. But who are they playing against and who fits that role best in that game? Three and one on Pickering, who has grounded to first base and fly to center field in this one. Big hack at that one. Good pitch. See Pickering kind of pushed back towards the back of the box. Rolls this one back to Daniel, and she completes the play to first base. Inning over. Sooners get a couple of hits. They do get a run and lead 8 0, headed to the fourth. Scoreless ball gave up three hits and had four strikeouts. And now Carly Keeney, senior transfer from Liberty. She's a grad transfer. She has been very good. Did not allow an earned run in the month of February to start the season. This pitching staff is really deep, really solid athletes. Smoked to left field. This one is foul off the bat of the catcher, Brady Rowland. And we'll do it all over again. Sooner pitching change presented by Love's Travel Stops, the heart of the highway. Keeney was a part of three NCAA tournaments at Liberty. She gets a strikeout of Roland to start the fourth. It's a good start. That's what you want to see. Working that inside corner early in the count, setting it. Messing with her eyes, sending it back to that outside corner. So Keeney had 27 complete games a season ago at Liberty with 153 strikeouts. We mentioned that she went to the NCAA tournament three times. They eliminated UCLA last year, in fact. Yeah, that was tragic.
Austin Germain lifts this one down the right field line and just foul, evading that diving attempt by Maya Bland. Oklahoma able to pull very good transfers, Maxwell, Keeney, Monticelli, and Riley Ludlam, but adding to that pitching staff in particular. Yeah, those are huge pickups. Riley Keeney has been a huge asset, so has Kelly Maxwell. Peyton Monticelli, she's going to be a big deal. She throws hard. Mm. That smarts as Jermaine gets hit by pitch. Right at the hands. Oof. Top of the elbow or the forearm. And the shortstop, Tristan Troll, will be the batter. Troll had a base hit back in the second. Keeney and Monticelli can both really bring it. We were watching Monticelli the other day when she got in the game throwing, what, mid-60s yeah, maybe? Yeah, she throws gas. And it's always amazing to see how much they develop with Coach Rocha. She is a wonderful pitching coach. She understands their mentality. She takes the time to understand each pitcher and how they need to best be coached. One and two, two, troll. Third year at Tarleton State for Tristan Troll out of Decatur, Texas. To third, bobbled just briefly by Torres. They do get the out at second base and did well to get that. As Jermaine is cut down for the second out, Troll is safe at first. Great job by Alina, really sticking with that. So here's Hill, reached on a fielder's choice ground ball to third, her first time in this game. right back with a strike. Eight nothing lead for Oklahoma. The Sooners got seven runs in the first. Home runs by Sidney Sanders and Hannah Kaur. They won the opening game eight nothing by run rule. There is strike two to Hill. Early Kenny coming from Liberty, she was coached well. We have Dot Richardson over there, a wonderful coach, knows the game, has tons of experience in the game as a player and coach. She's been taught well. What a place to finish your career. Fly ball, right center field. That's going to reach the alley and go all the way to the wall. Troll is around third. The throw to the plate is not in time. And it's an RBI single for Kaylin Hill. 8-1 now. And that's the first run of the day for Tarleton State. I don't know how she got her hands inside that pitch. You see her front leg kind of open up towards third base to give her hands some space to send that ball opposite field. It's a really good piece of hitting. So here in the top of the fourth, 
the Texans get their first run. And we'll see pitch runner coming on. Bella Hernandez will run. Here's the second baseman, Jordan Dickerson. He is not afraid to come at the hands. I think they've identified that. Maybe why we saw Hill positioning herself with that open stance. We're seeing that here as well. That was Hill's fifth double and fifth run driven in on the year. Dickerson, fourth season for her at Tarleton State after a season at Northwestern State. It's that one right at Lilio to her left and right into the glove, inning over. A run home for the Texans, but the Sooners lead 8 1, headed to the bottom of the fourth. Eight, and it's 8 1 Sooners as we hit the bottom of the fourth inning. Quincy Lilio leads things off. Adding in the number three spot now for Brito, who had been 0 for 1 with a run score. <laughs> Little outside from Kendall Daniel. Leo's home run that you saw there on her stats came on Sunday against Iowa State. And it's a leadoff walk to Lilio. Gotta limit the free passes. Once OU gets a leadoff runner on, there's no telling when or if they'll be stopped. I think that may have been one of your keys, <laughs> Destiny. Revisit those Riverwind keys. Avery Hodge is in, shows bunt, takes a strike. Hodge batting here. Tiare Jennings was previously in this spot. She walked and scored a run. Slash toward left field. And she just dunks that in front of Wallace, the left fielder. Sooners have a little something going. Just perfectly placed through that 5-6 hole. See her keeping her hips square. I love the mechanics here, keeping her hands inside the ball. How much do you like seeing that right there? I love it. <laughs> I love it. Now Riley Boone in. Riley getting a chance to bat. Did not start this game. She's batting for Sanders and rockets this one out into right center field. Lilio is around to score and stopping at third will be Hodge. A double for Riley Boone batting there for Sidney Sanders and the Sooners are still swinging away back to an eight run lead. We have seen a ton of doubles being hit by this lineup. We're used to seeing the long ball, but the amount of doubles we've seen the last three weekends is incredible. No doubt. Sooners had 10 doubles over the weekend 
in the games against Iowa State. We saw a couple of doubles by Ella Parker in the earlier game here this afternoon. That is their first double in this game. And here's Bland getting the opportunity with runners in second and third. So the Sooners answer the run given up in the top of the inning with another one here. Bland off the glove of Daniel. She will get the out at first, but Hodge races in to score another Sooner run, and it's 10 to 1. So that's getting the job done, one way or the other, for Maya Bland. And the crowd appreciating it. She's doing what she got to do to score a run. That's what she's called upon to do. Just keep the inning alive. You see her hit that first baseman's foot. They both kind of come off aggressively. So Maya Bland knocks in that run. Alina Torres now. Riley Boone down at third base for the Sooners. That is the second RBI in the career of Bland. Second of many. My Bland really stood out to me in the uh, battle series in the fall. She did some good stuff. Mickey, Daniel tuck in her shirt before she goes back to work on Alina Torres. Torres has two runs scored in this game. Drove in the eighth run with a sacrifice fly. setting here in the Norman area. You can see it's going to get a little chillier, but the wind has all but subsided. They're playing Bedlam baseball just down the block at Eldale Mitchell Park. Sooners and Cowboys in a non-conference matchup. Porter Moser's Oklahoma Sooner men open Big 12 basketball tournament play up in Kansas City tomorrow afternoon. Busy, busy time. And there is ball four low to Torres. Sooners have runners at the corners and only one out. Riley Ludlam with another opportunity. She is two for two in this game. Had a two-run single in the bottom of the first inning. And then had another base hit in the third. Opportunity for more. I love what she's about. Coming in as a senior, understanding that Kinsey Hansen is pretty dominant in this program. But you're willing to come in, step up, do what you got to do. She has taken advantage of every opportunity she's given. So Patty Gasso, that positive affirmation with Ludlam. Not always easy to come into a program like this. We showed you all of the pitching transfers, but to try to break into this lineup at the plate, yeah. this, this is a player that had an excellent career at Furman. She was the Southern Conference Player of the Year last year. I mean, you don't even see players that are typically interested in something like that. You you look at the OU lineup and you say, okay, is this something I should do? Go try to beat Kinsey Hansen out. She's been there her whole <laughs> career. Is that something I want to try to do? But I 
I love the energy that she's brought to this team, and she's just so willing to learn and do whatever it takes. And when she's called upon, she does what she needs to do. And yet the Sooners do have those players. Now, they transferred in a little bit earlier in Alyssa Brito, who came from Oregon and has made huge contributions. And Cindy Sanders came in from Arizona State as well. Two for two in this game is Ludlam batting 378. She's hit two home runs and driven in 14. She hit 10 home runs last year at Furman. Ludlam off the middle in the center field and a base hit. That chases home boom. And it's 11-1. It's a three for three night for Riley Ludlam. That's what you want to see out of her. You want to give her any opportunity possible. Chance to score some runs. She's done that tonight. May see a pitching change as looks like head coach Mark Kumpion is out and we will see a pitching change. Yeah. Ludlam and Core, who bats here, they've driven in six runs combined. <laughs> yeah. That's what she wants to see. When you are given a chance, you've got to do something with it. We've seen that from Ludlam, we've seen it from Core. Alina Torres, we see her in and out of the lineup. She's done a good job tonight. Uh, but overall, we've seen everybody, one through nine, no matter who it is, they've done a great job. Or rolls this one to short. Troll will step on the bag, but not get the out at first base. So Ludlam cut down for the second out. Core safe on the fielder's choice play. And Torres goes to third. Smart play by Troll over at shortstop. Just getting it out. Keeping her momentum going. So Cora is retired for the first time tonight. Back to the top of the order for Parker. Ella Parker is 0 for 1 in this game, but has two walks. And she had two doubles in the earlier game. Over the outside edge for Marcus. That one bounded off of Roland and then bounced off Ella Parker. Everybody will stay put. This Sooner freshman. And there's ball four to load the bases. That is the third time that Ella Parker has walked in this game. So you appreciate the patience. And, and again, you know, Patty Gasso was talking before the game, said, I'd like to see different players in the leadoff spot. Well, here's Parker. Lead off spot, and she's taken three walks. <laughs> Gotta do whatever it takes. I've seen her with strategies like this because people were choosing to walk the players purposely, which I don't think we're seeing that here. But I remember Lauren Chamberlain was in the lead off spot because once you would get to her in the lineup, they'd walk her. Mm -hmm. So you can't walk your lead off. <laughs> Although I'm surprised somebody didn't try that with yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Sooners have a lefty stacked lineup right now. One through six are left-handers. But again, you can just interchange so many things. 
Pickering takes, and there's ball four to force home run number 12. It'll be an RBI for Pickering. And the Sooners have sent nine batters, and now number 10 will come to the plate in the person of Quincy Lilio here in the fourth. Chad, how's your scorecard <laughs> looking? <laughs> It looks like me trying to do math in elementary school. Lots of eraser marks, scratches, and scribbles. How about yours? You've got that tablet, okay. which is really slick. What's that program you have on your on your tablet? So with this school? is called Remarkable. Remarkable. It's, it is remarkable. It's, it's way more remarkable than this thing I've got. <laughs> it is just a uh, like notepad. It's not an iPad. It's just for notes, and it kind of feels like you're writing on paper. It's, yeah. it's pretty neat. Do you think people still keep scorebooks at home or if they're out just hanging out in their car? I hope so. Me too. I sure hope so. I think now with Game Changer and stuff, a lot of things are digital. Yeah. It's it's made me lazier at keeping my book. Yeah. <laughs> I've always asked some kids that I work with or just see in the softball world if they know um, how to keep score. Mm-hmm. Well, they do it on game changers so they slide the runners and they tap out and it's a little bit different as, than an actual as most score things, book. They learn digitally <laughs> yeah. rather than pencil to paper. But I've always asked over the years when I have you or I you know have DJ Sanchez up here or we got Aaron up here, how did you learn how to keep a book? That's usually for people who are not playing and you were always playing. As Lilio sends this one right at the center fielder, Hill. Answers to probing questions like that when we return as the Sooners go for the sweep, leading 12-1 on to the fifth. Typically see some of these women starting, but what they have done and what they've produced this game has been amazing. And I know that she's got to be really content. She's got to call upon any of these athletes. Oh, yeah, and Cindy Sanders has been really good, too. Oh, yeah. Two more home <laughs> runs today, one in each game of the doubleheader. Two three-run home runs for Sanders. She has hit eight home runs in her last eight games. This is ripped foul by LaRue. Carly Keeney back out there to try to finish things up for the starter, Nicole May, who went three scoreless innings. Keeney gave up a double that scored a run back in the fourth. Home run of the day so far for the Texans. And Kelly Maxwell threw a five inning no hitter in the first game for the Sooners. Two balls and two strikes. Sooners got seven runs in the first inning of this game. Sanders three run home run core a two run home run and they led eight nothing before the Texans got that run on the double by Hill in the fourth but the Oklahoma offense came right back and posted four in the top half and it wasn't the long ball in the bottom of the fourth inning Boone an RBI double an RBI ground out a couple of walks an RBI single by Ludlam back to this double digit lead. To first base and an easy play down there as Ella Parker is now at first. She's replaced Sidney Sanders. One away. Patty Gasso talked before the game about just wanting to maintain and continue to get better. They they built things last weekend against Iowa State, and it's not like things were falling apart to begin with. <laughs> they lost one game to Louisiana that broke the 71-game winning streak. But do you see those consistent corrections and, and things that Coach Gasso would want? Yeah, 
Oh, yeah. I think that game against Louisiana, again, it's not the end of the world. They're, you're going to lose a softball game. That's part of it. But I think what we saw was a lot of things that they could get better at, a lot of things that they can learn from, and I've definitely seen that. I think we saw some, you know, uncharacteristic-like plays on defense, quite a few errors. I know we counted three, but it looked like there was a lot more. Uh, we saw a pitching staff that wasn't settled in, who wasn't extremely confident. Um, just a lot of different things, and I think over the last week or so, they've really cleaned it up. Foul down to play by Wallace. Wallace doubled back in the first inning. First two batters of the game reached off of Nicole May. But she came back and got the side without giving up anything and pitched three scoreless innings. See, they, they take the foul ball but give you a souvenir ball. <laughs> That's okay, right? Yeah. You got to keep the game balls. Give them back. But you'll get a souvenir. So why are the game balls different? It's the core, the compression. The the balls that they give away are more recreational, just kind of give away. Full count now to Wallace. to first and just foul. Let's see. Skip outside the bag. Lead umpire Perry Owens all over it. Swing and a miss. And the Sooners are one out away from sweeping a doubleheader. That is the second strikeout for Keeney and the sixth for Sooner pitching in this game. And here's Katie Schaefer. She has struck out twice in this one. Carly Keeney trying to finish things up here for Nicole May, who would get her eighth win of the year. It's a really good pitch. The way that it moves into that inside part of the plate. Swing and a miss, back-to-back -back strikeouts to finish it. And the Sooners get a sweep at Love's Field. Six games won in a row for Oklahoma. They restarted a winning streak as they win the opener by a final of 8-0 and the nightcap by a score of 12-1. More home runs in this game. Sydney Sanders hits her eighth. In the last eight games, Hannah Core hits a two-run home run. And some players who don't typically get a lot of at-bats got some, most importantly, Destiny. They were productive at-bats. Yes, I love getting to see them take advantage of all of their opportunities. We saw some people that you don't typically see in the lineup. 